A critical flaw in Citrix is finally patched, the NSA reports a major Windows bug, and half a million usernames and passwords were leaked. All that coming up now on ThreatWire. Greetings, I am Shannon Morris and this is ThreatWire for January 21st, 2020. This is your summary of the threats to our security, privacy, and internet freedom. If you are interested in supporting ThreatWire on Patreon, hit up patreon.com slash ThreatWire. Also, I have some huge news to share. I am going to be moving to Denver, Colorado in a couple of months. I bought a house and I'm going to be building a permanent studio in my new home. It's a whole lot to explain, so click on my explainer link down below in the description. And now onto the news. First off with Citrix. Way back at the end of December, a major flaw was found in Citrix's Application Delivery Controller, or ADC for short, and gateway products that would allow an attacker unauthorized access to a network and the ability to run malicious code on said network. It affects at least 80,000 companies in 158 countries and spans several years worth of Citrix devices. Specifically, it affects Citrix ADC and Gateway 13.0, 12.1, 12.1, 11.1, .1, and 10.5. In December, Citrix posted a public security bulletin for CVE 2019-19781 for customers asking them to block some SSL VPN requests with their mitigation technique, but a firmware update was not yet pushed out. Now, two weeks after this announcement and the problem still had not been patched, security researchers started reporting that they were seeing attackers scanning for potentially vulnerable systems, and some had even made their own working proof of concepts of the exploit. Now, two of those working exploits were posted on GitHub by Trusted Sec and Project Zero India, showing how severe the issue actually was. That was about two weeks ago. Now, according to the POCs, the exploit just requires a couple of HTTPS requests due to a traversal bug in the gateway web interface. One request fools Apache web servers to point to a certain directory without authentication, which allows the attacker to execute commands. The issue is so severe that even the Cybersecurity and Infrastructure Security Agency, which is CISA, released a utility to check if a network is susceptible to the vulnerability. Now, while security researchers were quick to share their own POCs, one attacker took it to a whole nother level by creating a payload that FireEye dubbed Not Robin. This payload was being spread by an attacker on a Tor node who created a backdoor on vulnerable and breached Citrix devices and removed and blocked any other malware from being installed on the device. Now, while it sounds like this attacker is patching those systems, they could also be sitting and just waiting to attack those networks in a future campaign. Luckily though, Citrix did finally, finally release updates starting this week, starting with versions 11.1 .1 and 12.0 on January 19th, and all of the other versions to follow for January 24th. It has been almost a decade since the NSA's PRISM surveillance program was leaked, and now it seems like the NSA is getting into bug bounties? On the same day that Windows 7 lost its support from Microsoft, the US National Security Agency publicly disclosed that the tech giant had a serious flaw in Windows 10 that could allow an attacker to spy on users. Now this crypto spoofing bug more specifically would allow an attacker to create a fake security certificate so they could run malicious code on the device without being flagged. They could also set up remote code execution attacks, man in the middle attacks, decrypt confidential information while compromising HTTPS authentication. One security researcher even announced that this could affect TLS or transport layer security if this is used within applications for secure communications. An attacker could extract a public key from a root certificate shipped with Windows by default and signed with ECC. More on that in just a little bit. Now from there, they could create a private key copying the legitimate Windows private key, and Windows fails to check a specific parameter for private keys, so a 
spoof certificate is not actually flagged by any AV. Now, it is unknown how long the NSA deliberated on whether or not to disclose this flaw to Microsoft, nor when it was actually originally found. The NSA believes that attackers could easily exploit it, so they decided to go ahead and report it. The flaw was fixed in a push update as a part of Microsoft's Patch Tuesday, so if you have automatic updates scheduled and enabled, you should already see an update happening if you have not already. At the time of the announcement, Microsoft believed that the bug had not been actively exploited in the wild. The vulnerability was reported as CVE 2020-0601, and it happens due to how Windows validates elliptic curve cryptography, that's the ECC part, which are certificates. And thus, the flaw was dubbed NSA Crypt. Just a day after this announcement, a security researcher was able to figure out how to use the flaw and spoof the HTTPS certificates for both github.com and nsa.gov. So instead of returning the legitimate websites, users would see Rick Astley's Never Gonna Give You Up because Rick Rolling is not even dead yet, even though it's 2020. The proof of concept would likely require some kind of specific events to take place, like an active man in the middle attack or visiting a specific website before it could work. With that said though, several other proof of concepts ended up popping up in the last week that even went so far as to share code. To update manually, go to Windows Settings, choose Update and Security, Windows Update, then check for updates on your PC. This is the first time that the NSA has come forward with a bug disclosure publicly, and the director of the NSA Cybersecurity Directorate stated that it was to raise awareness as well as to build trust between the government sector and the tech sector. Before we hit story number three, I wanted to say thank you so much to my supporters over at patreon.com slash threatwire. My Hush Puppy Perk Level patrons are awesome for sending in their fur baby photos. I love them, so keep them coming. They're so cute. Also, if you want to support Threatwire, but you don't want to be a Patreon supporter, I have opened up an online store of Threatwire swag that is mailed to you directly from me so you can show off your support. Check out snubsy.com shop. I'll put that link down in the show notes to get t-shirts, stickers, even my own digital photography, all of which supports my shows. Thank you so much to everybody who supports the show. This feature story was chosen by my Patreon patron, Emery Lee. By the way, if you are a patron and ever run across a story idea for Threatwire, pop it into the Discord or the community tab on Patreon and you may get a shout out on the show. This is not the first time that Telnet credentials have been leaked online, but this is likely the largest ever leak of those kind of usernames and passwords. Over the weekend, 515,000 servers, home routers, and IoT smart device credentials were leaked to a hacking forum, including their IP addresses, usernames and passwords, so anyone with very simple know-how could remotely access the devices using the internet and using Telnet. The leaker was able to find these credentials by scanning the internet for any devices that were exposed to the Telnet port. Now, Telnet by default uses port 23 for incoming connections to a client device, and it is based on the Transmission Control Protocol, or TCP for short. Telnet is often left open on things like printers for convenience, but this can oftentimes do more harm than it can good. Unfortunately for the found devices, many of them were still running default default username and password combos, or really easy to guess ones. They chose to leak the database after upgrading their own tech to rely on different types of data. Now the data list is from late 2019, so chances are a small percentage may have been changed by then. But if it's anything like some home routers I've seen, they have the same credentials for the lifetime of the equipment because the user just never gets around to updating them. Some server owners may have been notified by security researchers about this leak, but for for home routers, this may not be the case. If you own any smart home devices or connected servers or routers, ensure that they are fully updated and are not using default credentials. Now, before I leave, I want to say thank you so much to Merv, Jesper, NLF, and Brandon, who joined the Patreon team this week. Thank you so much. Y'all are awesome. And with that, do not forget to like and subscribe. I am Shannon Morse, and I will see you on the internet, and eventually on the internet from Colorado, which has way faster internet, and I'm very excited about that. Woo, fiber. Yeah. Bye. <laughs>